Well, good morning. What a beautiful prelude this morning. Thank you, Edie. I don't know about the rest of you, but I was, I was a complete mess this morning. My whole schedule was all off, and I was sitting at the table at 10 minutes to 9, putzing around, thinking church was at 10.30. What a mess, right? I'm a mess. Aren't we all a mess? So, well, good morning. It is so good to have you here in the sanctuary. It is so good to be able to lead a worship service to faces instead of bumpers and headlights. Usually at 10 a.m., we're outside, and we're, that's what we're doing. All I see is bumpers and headlights. It is not right for the pastor to know what everybody drives to church. <sighs> it's been an interesting 18 months, hasn't it? But it is good to be back into the sanctuary, and I want to say thank you to all of you who are willing to come and wear a mask. I know that masks are... We're tired of them, and, and I know that they get hot, and, and I get it. I feel the same way, but we're wearing masks because we love each other enough to keep each other safe. So thank you for coming and being in the sanctuary and showing, not just talking about, but showing that we love our neighbors. So if you are tuning in on Facebook Live, it is great to have you with us. We are hoping that this 10 a.m. service will be fulfilling for everyone. Um, the, the, this service at 10 a.m. in the sanctuary will be very similar to the outdoor service. The two, the 8.30 and the 10 o'clock, really weren't that different. So, so we're hoping that, that you're able to, to feel comfortable and, and be willing to come back and visit with us each and every week. So I, for those of you who may not know me, I'm Dawn Hauser, and I'm the pastor here at Aiken United Methodist Church. There are several people who assist in planning and leading this worship service each week, and I'd like to say thank you to all of them. We could not possibly provide the worship experience that we do without their assistance, their willingness to serve, to give of their time and their talent. So, so Jesus, today we're going to explore what Jesus modeled. He modeled a new kind of a relationship in this world, one that put no one above another. Indeed, he always, always lifted up those who were put down by society. As Jesus' own, are we going and doing likewise in this world by lifting up those whose path we cross? Or do we bring others down? What random acts of kindness will you be caught doing that creates the ties that bind. So for the past couple of weeks, we've been engaged in a worship series. It's entitled The Tie That Binds. And so you might be noticing here that there is some, some cloth ribbons, and so we've been tying them. And I'm hoping that everybody grabbed one. If you didn't, maybe we'll ask the ushers to get them and and pass them out so everyone gets them. And so what I'm going to invite you to do with those ribbons, I think the basket of them is down. I think there's a basket here maybe, and there's a basket down by the door. But um, what I'm going to ask you to do with those ribbons is to, if you are sitting next to someone, close to them, tie your ribbons together. If you are not close to someone, we want to adhere to social distancing. And so even though they're not all tied together at once, I want to ask you to leave them in the back, in the overflow area, and someone will tie them together. And then we'll add them to what we have going on up here. It's getting to be quite long, and so I'm thinking we might have to find a different place to display them, or a different, I don't know, we'll figure it out, right? So I'm going to ask you if you would please stand if you are able, and let's begin our time of worship together in prayer. Let's pray. Oh God, the gospel is such a paradox to us. To be great, we must be willing to serve. 
Yet Christ set a living example in washing the feet of the disciples. Make us servants, O Lord. In Christ we pray, amen. I'm going to ask you to please be seated if you are able, and I'm going to ask Edie to play for us from the faith we sing, Lord, we have come to ask your blessing. I would ask you, please do not sing, because when we sing, we're spreading our whatever out into the world and and so but what I am going to invite you to do is to hum along you're going to recognize the tune you might not recognize the words so Well, if this is your first time in the sanctuary, you know that that was weird, right? Let's just name it. It's strange to have Edie play music, although we love to listen to Edie play music, but here we are in the sanctuary and we can't sing. So I want to invite Marilyn. She's already stood up once and then I decided to go off on my own. But I want to invite Marilyn to come and read for us from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. morning. Um, Pastor Don is right. It's good to be here and it's good to see all your faces. Um, the scripture reading this morning, like Pastor Don said, is from John. It is chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. Um, this one tells of Jesus washing the disciples' feet. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world. He loved them to the end. 
The devil had already put it into the heart of Judah's son, Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing <clears throat> that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if your Lord and teacher have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Thus ends the reading. Thank you, oh boy. You know, we usually look at this passage of scripture for um, Holy Week, for Monday, Thursday. It's the foot washing. It's kind of odd and different to think of this story this time of year. It's kind of out of context. But I think we're living in a time when we really, really need to let these words seep into our soul. What do they really, really mean? You know, Jesus starts off in this, the, the scripture starts off by telling us almost instantly that Jesus knew that Judas was going to betray him. Right? And we all know what happened to Judas. And I, it makes me wonder sometimes, what does Jesus think about us? Does Jesus think of us as a Judas? I hope not. And he goes on and he has this conversation with Peter. And he explains to Peter, I need to do this for you. I have to wash your feet for you. And Peter says, no, you're, you're above me, basically, is what he's saying. I don't want you. You're, you're the Lord. I'm the, I'm the servant. I don't want you washing my feet. And Jesus simply tells him, I need to do this for you. It was such an amazing lesson. It's an amazing management lesson for any of you who have worked in management or had the, the opportunity and the privilege to be a manager or supervise other people. This is a fantastic lesson for us, isn't it? Don't do to somebody else what you won't do for yourself, right? And that's kind of the lesson that Jesus was giving here. The other part of this lesson that is so important is it's about servanthood. It's about serving other people. It's about showing kindness and love. Now, I don't, I don't know about you, but I don't 
I'm not particularly proud of my feet, and I don't want somebody else washing my feet. I can do a fine enough job in the shower. It's kind of a weird feeling, isn't it? If you've ever been a part of a foot washing, you know that it can be kind of a, a strange experience to the first time it happens. I've also been part of um, hand washing, where instead of washing feet, wash hands. That's not quite as weird. But feet washing can be kind of weird. You know, in the time that this took place, everyone who came to dinner or came in the house washed their feet. And they washed their feet because they wore sandals. It was dusty and dirty, and so it was just a common practice. But for Jesus to put the towel around him, to bend down, because you have to be on your knees to do this, right? To bend down on his knees in front of each of these disciples and wash their feet. It conjures up an interesting image in our head, doesn't it? I think about the world we're living in today. Oh, my land. It's exhausting to think about it, isn't it? I heard a statistic this morning that one in three Americans has, is living with a, within a natural disaster since the beginning of this summer. One in three Americans. We look at these people who are living in these natural disasters. We see the images on TV. We hear their cries for help. They have no water. They have no electricity. They have to go to the Red Cross and stand in hour-long lines to get ice just to keep their medication cold. They, they are living, some of them, 100 degrees out with high, high humidity. They're crying out for help. And we think about the people who have experienced flooding this last week. Whole families died in basement apartments. Parents with their children. Unbelievable, horrendous, horrendous stories. The cries for help. We think about even in our own community, we have children getting ready to return to school. I wonder sometimes how many of them don't have new tennis shoes to go to school didn't get to go on the new, new school clothes shopping trip, will show up to school with very few school supplies. They cry out for help, but they don't do it in the way that we, we think they do. Or they're not, they don't cry out with a voice, but they cry out to teachers and the administration and there are people that see and know, what are we doing? Yesterday, I have a confession to make. Millard and I had to make a emergency dash to Walmart. That's half the confession, I went to Walmart. The other half of the confession is that I'm we were in a hurry because I needed to get home, I had things to do. And I pulled into the parking lot at Walmart. It's Labor Day weekend in Brainerd at Walmart. Do you know what that parking lot was like? Ugh, what a nightmare. But I pull in there, and I'm driving up the aisle, and there's, there's a parking space that's fairly close to the door. Now, by looking at me, I should have parked in the back of the parking lot, right? I needed the extra steps. But, but I think to myself, I'm in a hurry, I just need to, and there's this parking space that's about four spots from the very front row up by the door, and there's a guy standing there. He's, I think he was counting the clouds in the sky or something. I don't know what he was doing, and all I could, and I said to Millard, I said, ugh, this putz needs to get out of the way so I can park this car, and and I was just irritated by him. And I thought afterwards, what are you doing? Maybe everybody should be looking up at the clouds and counting the clouds in the sky these days. Maybe that's what he needed. 
Who knows why he was wandering around slowly? I don't know. But I should not have been irritated with him. Instead, I should have got out of the car and I should have said, have a good day. I think about when I go through the lines in grocery stores or I go to, to restaurants and I think about the people who have diligently worked. I, I Another confession I'll make. As we were leaving Brainerd, it was dinner time. And so we went to the Chinese restaurant because, you know, I love Chinese food. And, and so we go to the Chinese restaurant and I always think to myself about the people working in there. Most of them are immigrants. English is a second language for them. They're also marginalized people living in our society at a time right now when, when Asian people are being persecuted and racialized and it's just, it's a horrible situation. And so I'm always kind to them. I always try to give them a good word and smile and not give them a hard time. When the lady asked us, where would you like to sit? I said, wherever it's easiest and convenient for you, that would be great. I wonder sometimes in our lives, and we all do it, we're all stressed out, we're all struggling through this time that we're living in, how are we showing kindness? These folks who work in gas stations and grocery stores and restaurants, these are jobs that are hard jobs with low pay and they are putting themselves out there. They are working with the public, many of the public who has not been vaccinated, who refuses to wear a mask and be socially distanced. They're putting their own health at risk. Are we being kind to them? The world that we're living in is a mean, horrible, horrible place, isn't it? And we know it's supposed to be like this. It's supposed to be like this. The kingdom of God is not like that. The kingdom is perfect and beautiful. And isn't that what we want to invite people into, the kingdom? When I look around at all of you here in the sanctuary and I think about all of the folks who are watching us, we are all tied together. We are all a part of the kingdom of God. And in the kingdom, it's perfect. Now, I like to tell my colleagues that I serve the best, most perfect congregation in the state of Minnesota. And they all roll their eyes and walk away. But, but I know that this is the place, this is the picture of the kingdom of God. This is as close to perfection as we're going to get. And I also know that we're not perfect, right? Because we're all human beings. We have our moments, but this is a place where love flows. This is a place where we are all tied together. And we're tied together through, through the tragedies in life and through the joys and the triumphs in life, right? We send prayer chains out. We pray for one another when we need prayers. Earlier this week, someone in the community, their, their child was hurt in a, in a horrendous accident, and, and we prayed for them because they're connected to us. We have connections in so many different places, and we're all tied together. But the knot that ties us together is love. It's God's love. And so I want you to remember as you leave this place today that the world is dark and it's broken and it's a hurting world. And what the world really needs more than anything right now is for us to be kind to one another, to remember that we're all tied together, to remember that love flows the most amazing Agape love flows from God through each of us. It's our responsibility as disciples of Jesus Christ to not call the guy standing in the parking space a putz and instead 
to offer love and to allow that love to throw, flow through us. Amen. Well, you know, things are a little bit different. I know it's, it's great to be back in the sanctuary and it's great to see each other, but because we are connecting not just with each other here in the sanctuary, we're also connecting with scores of people on the other side of that camera. And I think about those folks who are on the other side of that camera, they are tied to us here because a lot of them are people who lived here, are connected to this congregation, and now live in other places. And so they have been so appreciative to be able to participate in our worship services through media, through technology. And, and it's been a wonderful experience for them. And so we have folks from other countries that, that are watching, and, and it's good to have them with us. So, you know, Jesus taught his disciples to pray for each other. And I mentioned just a few minutes ago that we send out prayer chains, and, and those prayers are important. Our, our prayers that we pray individually are so important. And it's just amazing to watch as those, those prayers are answered. And sometimes they're not answered the way that we think they should be answered. But they are answered because God's will is done, not ours. So this morning, I want to invite you to pray with me. Corporate prayer is as important as our individual prayers. And so as we pray as a body of Christ, God hears those prayers. So I want to invite you to say the words, hear our prayer, when you hear the words, Lord, in your mercy. Let's pray together. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all, na all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as Christ loves us. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We especially pray for those whom we hold in the silences of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. We offer these prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, here at Aiken United Methodist Church, we live by three gospel imperatives to grow in love of God and neighbor, to reach new people, and to heal a broken world. We do this in all sorts of different ministries, things like the Light of Jesus ministry, support for the food shelf, Bible studies and Simply Pray, the community meal, and, and many other ministries. We cannot possibly engage in these ministries without financial contributions. I would like to invite you to partner with us in fulfilling these three gospel imperatives and in ultimately 
growing the kingdom of God. There are several ways that you can send an offering to us. You can text your offering to 833-409-0569. I have to be careful with this because it's really easy. <laughs> so you can use the Give Plus app in your smartphone in the, in the app store. You can also utilize online giving at our website, AkinUnitedMethodist.org. You can mail a check directly to the church, or if you're here in the sanctuary, there are a couple of beautiful wooden boxes that are in the back that you can certainly leave your offering in. There's one in the narthex back there, and then there's, that's a weird word, isn't it, narthex? But in the back by the doors, and then over here where we come in, there's a beautiful wooden box there that you can leave your offering in. And we will care for it after the service. I want to invite you to please stand as we listen to Edie play the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Feel free to hum. I know you know the words and the melody, right? Feel free to hum. could hear you humming. It was wonderful. Let's pray and ask God to bless the gifts we have received. We lift this bread and this cup to you, O oh Lord, who will be lifted up. May the tears of our hearts flow freely as you call us to your table, and may our love for one another be a sign of your great love for us. May you use each of us and our gifts to grow your kingdom here on earth. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, I want to invite you to please be seated. And I'm going to ask Danny to play for us uh, our communion preparation hymn. It's called, Come Ye Sinners, and I think that you'll enjoy this.
love that hymn. I found that. Danny says that the mic's not on, right? That's a problem. Oh, because the battery has probably dead there. It's only going to last a few seconds. I might have to start yelling. So, um, this was a hymn that I found during the pandemic. And I found it at a time when it was so important for me because I was just feeling my, like my soul was so dry and just needed to be quenched. And so we come to the Lord's table today hoping that our souls will be quenched. If you're at home, I'd like to invite you to prepare your bread and your grape juice for communion. If you're here in the sanctuary today, you would have received a small cup with a wafer on the top and there's grape juice on underneath there are two seals so you want to pull the first seal back to get the wafer out and then pull the second seal back for the the grape juice so you will find the responses to our communion liturgy are on the screen and i will read the italicized words if you would respond with the bolded words Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for you while you were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. On the night before meeting with death, Jesus took the bread. He asked God to bless it, and then he passed it to the disciples, and he said to them, Eat from this, all of you. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then when the supper was over, he took the cup, and he gave thanks to God. And then he passed it to his disciples and he said to them, drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And as often as you drink it, remember me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and a living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us who are gathered here, O oh God, and on these gifts of bread and vine. Let them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that in the breaking of this bread and the drinking of this wine, we may know the presence of the living Christ, that our souls would be quenched and that we would be renewed as the body of Christ for the entire world, redeemed by Christ's blood until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at this table forever. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. So now we pray as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body.
for we all partake of the one loaf. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ, the cup of forgiveness. In the United Methodist Church, we practice an open communion table. All who profess to love Jesus Christ and follow in the way of Jesus are welcome to come and share in the brokenness of Jesus' body and in the cup, the cup of forgiveness. I want to invite you to, to share with me the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. I would ask you if you could please stand as we offer our prayer of thanksgiving after communion. Let's pray. Holy and gracious God, as you once delivered your people from the land of Egypt, so now the sacrifice of your son delivers us. As his blood flows through our bodies, may his love flow through your world, that his life given up in obedience will make all things new. In the name of the Christ we pray, amen. Well, I'm gonna ask you if you would please remain standing if you're able, and I'm gonna ask Edie if she would be willing to play the servant song. It's number 2222 in the faith we sing. She's gonna play verses one through three and then six. But I really want you to listen to the words of this song and let them flow over your heart because these are amazing words here that really, really give us our charge to leave the sanctuary. So. Oh, worship is strange these days, isn't it? We can pick out all the things that are odd and not right, those little cups with those sticky wafers that get stuck in the back of your throat, right? Not enough grape juice to wash it down. We're Methodists, we like real, fresh, soft bread, right? Not singing, again, we're Methodists, we sing, right? 
I know this is only for a short time that we will engage in a strange worship and then we'll be through it and we'll support each other through it and we'll do the best that we can. So go out into the world looking for ways to lift up someone else. Engage in random acts of kindness. These acts of kindness benefit the giver as much as they do the receiver. Who knows? You could be the beneficiary of an act of kindness. What a blessing that would be. Know this. When we engage in acts of kindness, we are allowing ourselves to be the heart, the hands, and the feet of Jesus Christ in the world. May you know the blessing and peace of being the conduit of God's love for the world. Amen. Go in peace to share the light and the love of Jesus Christ with the world.